Okay, that's a hard act to follow. Let's take both our colleges. And, and I'm going to say that something is so true. At some of the meetings, uh, people were talking about they are taking the church, and they were talking about all these other apartment buildings they are talking, and we've seen all sorts of literature right. about all of that we all have. So I, I thank both councilmen for coming out and just telling it like it is, and I say, and I invite you all, I, I want to invite all of you, you know, I mean, seats in the chamber, but you know, there's new chairs there. No, okay, we don't you stay there that long. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, come, give me a second. Also, reach out to my council assistant. Please help me recognize Claudette Matthews, my assistant. Claudette is really busy. She's always in the community. I run into at Staples and Kinkos and every place, so I always have to make sure I'm on my good behavior. I never know when Ralph cares about checking on me. But once again, thank you. I know if you guys had a quick minute, if there was any direct questions, be the council people before you go. Yes, sir. Ms. Uh, on your chart, now, are you saying that this is prairie? Right. That's prairie. Okay, now, this yellow and this green, does that? So, this, go, these are all vacant lots. These are all vacant lots. Uh -oh. All this is vacant. None, the only thing that's, that's not vacant is right here in the city as a well. But these are all vacant. There are no housing units. Apartments, vacant land that we are dealing with for the development of the Clippers Arena. Right. Well, okay, All so vacant. this is south yeah. of Central. Nothing there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been so dispelled. Yeah. Every city you go to, they talk this about south we're taking an apartment, we've taken the, they always talk about the church, we've taken the church down right. on the board, yeah. and you hear all of that all the time. Give me a question back here. How does that affect the former uh, uh, revenue and, uh, and the the casino and all those well, we bringing another arena that's not you take. We do that was on our list. The casino is there for gaming, okay. primarily for cards and off track betting. Okay. That's what they're all there for. The but they do have shows. They're small shows. They're very yeah, yeah. Very, okay. very okay. small. Just, yeah. just continue yeah. on. And, and so the form, as an example. They identified that they're there when they did that mass modification, and the city of England contributed 15 million dollars for their for the development and acquisition. They pledged that they are focusing of the state of the art of, an, of a location of, for performing arts entertainment, not into the sporting activity. The only sporting activity I've ever seen there since they've been there since 2014 was boxing. Exactly. You have to understand the forum in their new construction has no locker rooms for teams. So they, even if they wanted to bring a basketball team or what have you, that is not and was not designed for that purpose. It's designed for concerts, acoustics. It's the number one concert venue site in the state of California, number two in the United States, number four in the nation. So it is serving a purpose, and it's right here in our community in Inglewood, the NBA arena, the Clippers arena, is being built for that, for the Clippers to play basketball. The acoustics aren't going to be for music, right? That's not to say that there may not be some concerts there, right? And that's the American way, competition or what have you. But the arena is being built for basketball. It's being built so that the Clippers can move their headquarters from Jefferson to Inglewood, their training facilities will be in Inglewood at the same site. Right. All their administrative uh, offices will be at the same site. Everything Clippers will now be here in Inglewood. And so there's, there's, a, there's a, a bit of a difference on how they're being built or how the farm was built and how the arena is being built. And then emphasize this map as well as the uh, highlight of the anticipated a uh, land usage for the particular arena, the et cetera, is on the city website. And I just gave uh, Ruth the, the actual uh, time for one more question. One more we got to get for the show to go. Do you hear yeah. um, about redevelopment and how redevelopment is coming to Inglewood that it will affect traffic and the flow of traffic? Is that true or not with the uh, NBA coming, the 
the stadium coming, the form. You hear the rumor saying it's, it's going to be congested. Is that true or not? Or is that already been happening? So the environmental environmental report has uh, EIR has been in in play ever since I've been on the council since '05. Right. And we have already anticipated. We already did the 18 month study. So when when the uh, stadium was being added, it turned out that the future office space and businesses that was going to take place south of Century would have created more day traffic than it would be for a stadium. So the EIR, Environmental Impact Report, is, is constant. Now a new EIR, Environmental Impact Report, is being done specifically to, to address the stadium flow of traffic. And I will tell you that there are 67 intersections that are being impacted with the Hollywood Park development alone, and 10 of those intersections are outside of the, the, the properties, the city boundary line. So that's been vetted, and in fact, part of the condition of, of Hollywood Park having a project, even before the statement was talked about, they had to give up 10 feet of their property, both on the north south, I'm sorry, the north side of Century and the east of Prairie, to allow an additional lane for that for that flow of traffic. And we're also investing over 40 million dollars that we received to do the refurbishing of the street of Century from Van Ness on the east to La Cienega on the west. Nice. So we have to remember. And then not finally, only traffic is bad traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then finally, let you know that we're also we're trying to reduce the amount of traffic that, along with the um, Green Line or the Crenshaw LAX line that's coming into the Inglewood City, and there will be two stations, one on, on Inglewood um, Florence and West Boulevard, and the other one right at Regent and Florence. So we're also looking for the first mile, last mile, like a people mover. If you've ever been to Disneyland before and you get on that monorail system, right. there's something being considered of having a monorail in the middle of Florence to go east to Prairie, down on Prairie, to drop off uh, right around PK Drive and um, Prairie, going back up in the air, and then back in the middle of the street, dropping back off again somewhere just south of of uh, Century and Prairie. Then it's going to come back up, come all the way back to Manchester, go down Manchester to Market Street, back to the state, to the uh, to the um, uh, station, train station. So this is always in the works. We've been working on this for many years. So. We're looking out for your interest. We hear people's concerns. We're addressing all those concerns. We want folks, like I said, to come to Inglewood. We don't necessarily want them to leave a venue and go straight home. We want them to stay and spend their money. We want them to visit our restaurants, to come out and enjoy an evening, make it, you know, an entertainment night, right? So, so that we can continue to keep Inglewood at the tip of the spear. And that this is a safe place to live, play, and have fun. So with that, thank you so much. All right, let's give a vote now. Residents are so fortunate to have a, a administrative team, council and mayor, administration that really cares about the city. And as you all know, they sponsor this event and take care of this at, at the uh, city. They allow us to do this. So um, once again, thank you both and thank you, other colleagues. Thank you too for being here. All right. Yeah, take care.